This block comes from a scene of the king and the royal family processing to the temple, a popular subject in the reliefs at Amarna. The family is often accompanied by attendants carrying fans and sunshades, like the four men whose heads are preserved on the block at the upper left. The men appear to stand beside the king's chariot, which the king himself drove. The reins extending between the chariot box and the horses' necks may be seen across the bottom of the block. One man is depicted with a short haircut characteristic of Nubian mercenaries, his rounded chin without facial hair contrasts with the squared chins of the at least some of the other attendants, which are probably meant to indicate the short chin beards of individuals from Asia Minor. After a lapse of some three centuries in the construction of decorated tombs at Thebes, high officials of the late 25th dynasty and the 26th dynasty again built elaborate tombs in Thebes and decorated them with fine limestone reliefs. Earlier Middle Kingdom and New Kingdom temples and tombs at Thebes offered subject matter and inflected their style. One of these impressive projects was the tomb of Nespikashudi, the vizier installed in Thebes by Samtik, I after the removal of the Kushite dynasty by the Assyrians, first excavated by the MMA in the 1920s, recent reclearance and conservation of the tomb have allowed a thorough study, which is forthcoming. The vizier Nespikashudi took over the terrace of a prominent Middle Kingdom dynasty 11 tomb cut into the north cliff at Deir el-Bari near the dynasty 11 temple of Mentehotep II and the dynasty 18 temple of Hatshepsut. C. 23-3174. The poor stone of the cliffside was carved out to create Nespikashudi's tomb chambers, and then blocks of fine, dense limestone were used to line the tomb. These casing blocks eventually became brittle from fire and mostly collapsed from the walls, leaving the tomb in the crumbled state in which it was found. King Nepopeter Mentehotep II was revered by the Egyptians as the ruler who reunited Egypt after the era of disunity, the first intermediate period that followed the end of the Old Kingdom. Descended from a family of Theban rulers, the king built his tomb and mortuary temple at Deir el-Bari in western Thebes. This relief was originally part of the decoration of the temple's main sanctuary that was added to the building at the end of the king's reign. The fine balance between figures and inscriptions on this block, as well as the clear outline and regular proportions of the king's image with its individualized facial features, exemplify the peak of a relief art that had developed over the decades while the vast temple complex was built and decorated. The figure of the goddess Hathor on the right of the block was chiseled away during the Amarna period when King Akhenaten propagated the soul worship of the god Aten. Hathor was repaired in plaster in early Dynasty 19, and some of the paint on the whole block may also have been renewed at the time. This rectangular stone stella honors an official named Mentuozer. Clasping a piece of folded linen in his left hand, he sits at his funeral banquet, ensuring that he will always receive food offerings and that his family will honor and remember him forever. To the right of Mentuozer, his son summons his spirit. His daughter holds a lotus, and his father offers a covered dish of food and a jug that, given its shape, contained beer. To show clearly each kind of food being offered, the sculptor arranged the images on top of the table vertically. The feast consists of round and conical loaves of bread, ribs and a hindquarter of beef, a squash, onions in a basket, a lotus blossom, and leeks. The low relief carving is very fine. The background was cut away only about one-eighth of an inch. Within the firm, clear outlines, the sculptor then subtly modeled the muscles of Mentuozer's arms and legs and the shape of his jaw and cheeks. The chair legs and the calf's head have also been carefully formed. The hieroglyphic inscriptions in sunk relief state that in the 17th year of his reign King Senwasrat, 
I presented the Stella to Mentuozer in appreciation of his loyal services. Mentuozer's deeds are described at length. He was steward, granary official, and overseer of all manner of domestic animals, including pigs. He is described as a good man who looked after the poor and buried the dead. Senwasrit's throne name, Keperker, appears within a cardach in the middle of the top line. Finely carved ivory combs and knife handles produced toward the end of Egypt's prehistory demonstrate the high standards Egyptian artists had achieved even before the Old Kingdom. This comb may have been part of the funeral equipment of an elite person who lived about 5,200 years ago. Parts of the comb's teeth, now missing, can be seen along the bottom edge. The detailed decoration suggests that it was a ceremonial object, not just an instrument for arranging the hair. On both sides are figures of animals in horizontal rows, a spatial organization familiar from later Egyptian art. The animals include elephants and snakes, wading birds and a giraffe, hyenas, cattle, and perhaps boars. Similar arrangements of these creatures on other carved ivory implements suggest that the arrangement and choice of animals were not haphazard. Elephants treading on snakes suggest that this part of the scene was symbolic. The mythologies of many African peoples associate elephants and serpents with the creation of the universe. The uppermost row of this comb may symbolize a creative deity to whom the rest of the animals owe their existence. <laughs>